So uh, in Japan, uh, there's a uh, continuing debate about whether to hold uh, Mr. Shinzo Abe's funeral as a state funeral. And uh, some people are against it, and some people are for it. And I am one uh, who think that uh, Mr. Abe deserves this treatment as a um, as a person who would be remembered and respected in a state funeral. Um, so there's this debate, but uh, I, I think what is more important is uh, the diplomatic and international affairs aspect of the state funeral. And uh, the question is whether Mr. Putin would uh, come to Japan to pay respect to Mr. Abe. And that would be a quite difficult thing to handle for the Japanese government. Uh, as it stands now, uh, what Mr. Putin is doing in Ukraine uh, is, uh, you know, outrageous. Uh, the, um, you know, um, it is condemned by the international community with good reasons. Uh, you know, nobody can, you know, nobody should force other nations to uh, accept uh, some point of view, whether it is territorial or otherwise, by the use of brutal force, and Mr. Putin is doing just that. So for that uh, reason, the Western nations are kind of ostracizing uh, Mr. Putin for good reasons. And, you know, having said that, uh, Japan is uniquely positioned uh, between uh, Asia and uh, the Western nations. Japan is um, a, the, a member of the G7 summit and so it is a member of the western uh, you know ad advanced nations and uh, uh, as such uh, japan shares many values with the western nations that is understandable on, uh, on the other hand japan is a neighbor of uh, china and japan has had uh, historically significant relationships with russia and uh, russia extends to asia it's a eurasian uh, country so japan is in a unique position if it can to mitigate uh, the tensions and conflicts between uh, the Western nations and Russia, if it uh, has the will to do so. So uh, the state funeral of Mr. Abe might be a unique uh, uh, opportunity for the Japanese government to uh, try to um, establish some uh, conversation and communication between the you know confronting sides. And in, in Japan, there is this traditional culture that, uh, you know, no matter what you do, no matter how you might disagree with somebody, when it comes to uh, matters of funerals, uh, you forget that uh, confrontation and you uh, give the opposition side a fair chance of expressing their views and to be friendly and to exchange ideas and so on and so on. It, it, so it, from that perspective, it's, it is conceivable that Mr. Putin might come to Japan and have some chat or two uh, with Western leaders such as uh, President Biden and President Macron and uh, even uh, President Xi Jinping of China might get into the picture. So I, I can imagine that it, within the Tokyo corridors of the Tokyo government, there are talks uh, in the foreign office and the cabinet office about the possibility of, um, you know, inviting, not inviting, probably uh, accepting uh, the offer of Mr. Putin to come to Japan and uh, attend a Mr. Abe's state funeral. Mind you, it would be a really difficult uh, and complicated uh, maneuver internationally and domestically. Um, if you just think of the protocols, uh, specific protocols on the day of the state funeral, uh, it, it would give a um, really excellent bureaucrat a uh, headache. And, you know, it is going to be very difficult, but it is something that uh, probably uh, is worth doing because I do feel that this continuing conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine is going nowhere. And of course, um, you know, we have universal values and I, I, I can understand the position that uh, Western, nation, Western nations, um, you know, um, you know, not having that, having what Mr. Putin is doing at fa its face value. I mean, it's um, not acceptable. I can understand that. But uh, from the point of pr practical, real politic, and from the point of view of saving the lives of millions of people, I think it is arguably, um, you know, justifiable uh, to have a negotiation process between Russia and Ukraine. And if Japan can 
meeting, uh, you know, uh, quoting that at the, stick, uh, at the occasion of Mr. Abe's state funeral, that would be great. Um, you know, because, you know, Western nations, uh, the UK, the US, France, they cannot really, you know, recede in this. I mean, they cannot make compromises because it's a principle, of, um, matter of principle. Um, you know, so they cannot be seen to be making compromises to Mr. Putin. And Mr. Putin cannot be seen to make be making compromises to the Western nations because that would undermine his uh, position as uh, Russia's leader. So, but you know, when it comes to funerals, uh, it is something special. It is something out of uh, the real politics. So for that occasion only, uh, the Western nations and Mr. Putin might have some uh, space, so to speak, uh, of uh, conversation, uh, either formally or informally. It is always, in, uh, you know, possible to arrange an informal meeting between the leaders, uh, you know, behind the scenes and so on. So, on. Uh, I think so. This question whether Mr. Putin would come to the state funeral of Mr. Abe, which would be held, as I understand it, uh, in the fall. Um, it is a really important question, and I will be watching uh, what's going on in Japan and outside Japan uh, in the broader uh, international context uh, for the coming years uh, as regards this uh, state funeral, uh, because um, I think it is a genuinely um, promising opportunity for world peace to find um, its way into the real politics. Ex despite all these, um, you know, difficulties concerning ideologies and universal values and, you know, uh, positions, uh, self-preservative uh, intuitions and so on. Uh, I think Japan can probably do something good for uh, the whole humanity if the Tokyo government handles it uh, intelligently and appropriately.